So in this video we're going to have a look at the geology of the UK. We're starting with uh, the key terms. Basalt, granite, metamorphic, igneous, schist, sedimentary, chalk, sandstone and slate. Now the key terms there. Uh, metamorphic, igneous and sedimentary. These are types of rock. The other ones are examples. Basalt and granite, they're types of igneous rock. Uh, metamorphic, that's schist and slates. Schist and slates are type of metamorphic rock. And sedimentary, chalk and sandstone are examples of those. Basically a rock that's been melted and then cooled is an igneous rock, so that's basalt and granite. A uh, rock that was deep underground and heated or under great pressure or both, and so it changed, that's a metamorphic rock. That's schist or slate, and a rock laid down in a river or at the bottom of the sea or in an ancient desert. That's a sedimentary rock. Chalk, sandstone. By the end of this PowerPoint, you should be able to describe the characteristics and distribution of the UK's main rock types. Important to note there, we've got two, two uh, questions in that one question. So, describe the characteristics of the UK's main rock types, so we would say what they're like. Most importantly, how hard they are, how resistant they are to erosion, and distribution, we need to say where they occur. So now we're looking at four different types of rock. Uh, a, we've got lava as liquid. This is a basaltic lava, so it will cool to basalt, and underneath the running lava you can see there's already some cooled basalt. Uh, B is a pink granite, C is a white granite, and D is cooled basalt. These are all igneous rocks. They're igneous because they're formed from molten rock. Having a closer look, we can see that this igneous rock, this granite, as it's cooled, this one's cooled very slowly, granites cool underneath the ground so they don't erupt. They're intrusive rocks, they do not erupt. As it's cooled deep underground, it's cooled very slowly and large crystals are formed. These crystals interlock. So we can see that as we look along the lines of it, they stick together like an immensely complex jigsaw puzzle piece. Well, that means they're holding on to each other quite tightly. They're quite tightly bound together. That's why granites tend to be quite hard and so resistant to erosion. Here now we're looking at the basalt. Basalt's are all also relatively hard, but not so much as a granite. And the main reason we can see here, we've got some large crystals that have formed. These may well have formed as the uh, magma was rising up through the volcano, but when it erupts, we get this whole mass forming. All of this mass the black stuff in the image. This formed really quickly because the cooling happened at speed, maybe underneath the water, or maybe as in A, as it emerged into the air. And that cooling that happened really quickly means that we don't have large crystals forming. You can get a glass forming here, a shiny black glass, known as obsidian, when it cools really quickly in water. But that means that these ones aren't quite as tightly linked together as these. So generally igneous rocks, hard and resistant to erosion. This is an extrusive one. The basalt is the extrusive, it has erupted. And so it cooled over a much shorter time period. We don't get the interlocking crystals, so it's not likely to be as hard as these granites, which will lock together. Moving along, now we've got two different types of uh, rock here, these famous white cliffs. And here, got fine little specklings of sandstone. If we have a look at this sandstone here, you'll see that it has uh, little pieces of rock in here, little pieces of sand, that's what sand is. But they're not interlocking, as was the case with the igneous, um, sorry, with the granite. These ones are held together in a mass, and they're cemented together by this mass. Because of that, they're not as tightly bonded to one another. 
and they're more likely to be broken apart or brushed apart, they're more likely to disintegrate. And because they're more likely to disintegrate, they're not as resistant to weathering as the granite on the last slide. This chalk is actually made of tiny little animals called coccolithophores. And you can see the shells of these tiny little animals here. As you can see, if you look at the scale here, these are really, really small. And so we're talking about absurd numbers, trillions and trillions, I guess, of coccolithophores making up these cliffs. This is chalk. It's a type of limestone. As you can see, relatively hard. It can, can hold a vertical face. Not as hard as those uh, granites in the previous image, but not as likely to fall, or not very likely to fall apart. It won't erode terribly rapidly. These are sedimentary rocks laid down underneath uh, in the case of chalk, underneath a shallow sea. In the case of the sandstone, could be a number of places it was laid down. Uh, material deposited within a river, maybe from a, a desert. Now we've got two more complicated rocks to look at. Depending on where you've lived, you may have seen these on people's houses. You've got these fine grained layers forming. This is a slate. This is a schist. We've got layers again in lines, so it's a bit like that. And and if we took something that was pressed into a slate and you put it under more and more pressure, more and more heat, well, maybe it would tend towards this and become a schist. If we have a look at them in more detail, you'll see that in a schist we have rocks banded and some of the bands have these interlocking crystals here. And that's very important. That makes this a particularly hard material. Slate 2 is quite hard, but not as hard as that one. It hasn't been metamorphosed as much. So these two are metamorphic rocks. They've been formed um, under heat and pressure. The, main, the difference between these and the igneous rocks is that while the igneous rocks melted and then cooled to form the rock, these ones may have been heated and may have been pressured but they haven't formed from the out. And so we can, uh, geologists can still look at them and see maybe what they were before they were buried. So describe the characteristics and distribution of the UK's main rock types. And here's a mark scheme. So if you can come up with a characteristic or location, some details, you might get one to two. You make one specific reference to a location, link it to a rock and a characteristic, we're in three or four, and to get up onto five or six, we'll have a complete description showing that you have really understood different rock types and that you can use examples. So, on the final part now, we're going to come back and actually going to describe this map. Well, what I want to come up with is a characteristic, a rock type, an example of that rock, and a location. So, if I start by looking up here in Scotland, I've got the mustard colour, the red colour, the purple. I'm down here. I've got mainly metamorphic rocks, some igneous rocks. Uh, as we discussed, these are the hardest rocks. And so I want to say in Scotland, there are hard, metamorphic and igneous rocks. So I've got location, characteristic, I've named the type of rock. Now I could maybe give an example. So I could say, for example, schists. Yeah. Then I'm going to say in the north of England, down here, the Pennines, we've got Wales, uh, these colours. I'm finding Carboniferous rocks and uh, Silurian rocks, or division. So these are hard old sediments. So once again, I, I need to talk about the characteristic. I need to locate them. I need to say what type of rock it is and then give an example. So I'm going to say in the north of England um, and in Wales, I find hard old sedimentary rocks. Now I need to give an example. So I could say, for example, limestone. 
uh, heading down here, the southwest of England. Here I've got intrusive igneous rocks, granite tors, Exmoor, Dartmoor, uh, Lizard Peninsula down here. So for this area, I'm going to have to mention these igneous rocks and also the sedimentary rocks that are around them. So in the southwest of England, so there's my location, we find uh, very hard intrusive rocks, e.g. granite, and hard old sedimentary rocks, e.g. Devonian. I might suggest they're sandstones, because they are. Um, and now we need to talk about the east and south of England, and these areas tend to be much younger, and they have much softer sedimentary, uh, sediments and sedimentary rocks. So the south and east of England tends to have younger, softer sedimentary rocks. Here we have some chalks, but also some clays. And a final point, we're just going to look at why we've got this other map on the left here. Well, there's obviously a correlation if you have a glance between the type of rock and the height of the land. Up here in the north of Scotland, we have very high land, and we've got metamorphic rocks, which are our very hard, our hard rocks, our hardest rocks. Then we've got the Cambrians and the Pennine Mountains here on these hard, old sedimentary rocks. Down here, we can really pick out that rock type. We can see where, uh, where we're getting these intrusive igneous rocks, where these granites are sticking through and being more resistant to weathering and erosion, and hence uh, forming highland areas. And then over here, these lowland areas, these lowland areas, these flatter areas, are made out of these younger, softer rocks.